Okay, hey folks. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions from all of my apprentices and a whole bunch of other scribes about gilding lately. Um, I've become kind of the gilding go-to for Trimeris um, because if it sits still long enough, I'll put gold leaf on it. So I thought I would go over today how to, um, and sorry, you can't see me, but I don't have a good camera set up right now, how to do um, flat gilding. Um, so I'm just gonna go through my process really quick. Um, and talk about the steps and uh, troubleshooting. And you may occasionally get a cat because my cat is watching me with great interest at the moment. All right, so materials first. Um, you will need a gold leaf. A lot of people like to use um, the faux leaf from the store, um, like just from Craft Store, the Michaels, but uh, your results are not gonna be as good with that. And it's gonna be a lot more irritating to work with. So um, my suggestion, if that is a budget concern for people, is to chip in um, with another scribe or two and you can split a book of leaf. Um, the leaf that I use is a 24 karat uh, loose leaf from LA Gold Leaf. They're a wholesaler in, Cal in California. Um, they are amazing. Um, we've done gold buy-ins with them before. Um, they ship very quickly and their product is good. That's Chaucer saying hi. Um, so I will show you the, what a, a book of, and drinking my paint water, which has thankfully got nothing in it yet. Um, I will show you what the loose leaf looks like. It's a little bit different than patent gold, um, but it is my preferred. It's a little more, I've got my fan going, which I should definitely not do. Um, but it's Florida, so we're going to wing it. Um, you can see it's kind of curling up. It's not adhered to a piece of backing paper. Um, I generally prefer the loose leaf as I find that I am able to get in nooks and crannies better. <laughs> that is not the case with every scribe. Your mileage may vary. Um, patent leaf has a little bit less waste to it, um, but this is just my preference. Loose leaf is also a little bit cheaper. Um, it does not matter if you go 18, 22, whatever it is. Um, the more, the higher the carrot, the more yellow the gold will be. So you want to make sure that if you're switching mid-project, you've got the same carrot leaf. Okay, so that's step one, gold leaf. Step two is our size. That's just our glue, um, whatever we're putting on. I tend to use for flat gilding, um, Chester's pink stuff. You can see this bottle has been through the ringer. Um, you can get this through from Chester himself or from John Neal Books, who is my uh, constant supplier of scribal goods. Um, I've had this bottle for a while. This has lasted me probably the last decade since I started uh, scribing again in Trimeris. <clears throat> um, the other size that I used to use, I don't actually have on hand right now, is a um, Instacall or Permacall. I'm not sure which name it's going by now. It's a very thick, yellowy um, size, and I tend to use that if I want a more raised gilding look. Um, again, this is for flat gilding, meaning it's going to be flat on the page. You're not going to have any um, 3D or rise with this gild, with this size, and you shouldn't. Um, if you're putting it on that thick, it's very, very thick, and it's probably not going to dry correctly. Okay, uh, our next things that we need will be just a little bit of red pigment. We mix that into the size. I'll go over that in a minute. Glassine paper. Um, you can get this at the post office, but you can also just order it online. I have a like a 300 sheet pack of this stuff. I go through it all the time. <clears throat> Something flat to burnish. Um, I use this lovely rock. Um, I do actually also have a houndstooth burnisher, burnisher um, but I am um, trying to go through this as I would for people who are just kind of getting started in this. So a flat rock will work, um, back of a spoon, anything smooth and, and hard will work for your burnishing. Okay. I also use this brush um, to brush off my extra leaf off the page. It's a watercolor brush. It's pretty soft. Um, it's got a little bit of stiffness to it and I'll talk about that step after as well. <coughs> Pardon me, my allergies are trying to kill me today. I do not have coronavirus. All right, so um, I've done this on two pieces of paper. I have done a piece on Bristol and I have done a piece on um, Perg over here. Okay, so these are both kind of our usual substrates um, that we use. This one will work very similar to uh, vellum. Okay. 
So what I'm gonna do is take my paintbrush. I don't know if you can see how terrible this paintbrush is. It has long ago passed the days of when I would ever use it to use actual paint, but that makes it perfect for gesso. Do not use your good paintbrush for this. You will never get the glue out of the bristles again. Um, use one that's dead. It's kind of crappy. <clears throat> and I've poured a little bit of my Tressor's Pink stuff into this shell with just a few um, basically water droplet swipes of the of the crimson to, for some coloration. This is gonna help it show up on the page so I know if I've gotten my whole area. Um, by itself, Tressor's Pink stuff looks pink in the bottle, but it comes out very clear on the page. So just gonna dip in here. And I'm sorry, I'm a lefty, so you're gonna have a hard time kind of seeing this. I'll try to keep my big hand out of the way. Let's see if we can actually move to the right here so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. That should be a little bit better. And all I'm doing is I'm filling in my shape with the gesso. I go right up to the line. You can also do this with a... Um, calligraphy nib if you're trying to do lettering or fine lines. Um, a crow quill will do fine lines for you. Okay, and I'm just filling in. <clears throat> That's it. Filled in. See? Um, I usually only do one coat. However, and this is the only magical thing about gilding, um, it is very dry in here in my house today. My AC has been running all day. So, I'm going to go back in and add just a little bit more in spots that I think looked a little thinner. They didn't have as much pigment, which means I didn't get as much sizing there. Um, and I'm going to let that dry now. Okay, you can kind of, oops, sorry. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see the reflection on it. There it is. Okay, this is still wet. I cannot gild on this yet. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to do the same thing with our perg piece. I'm gonna make sure I'm on camera for you guys. Typically what I will do when I'm working on an actual scroll is once I have everything drawn, this will be the first thing I go do. Um, I will paint in all of my size for all of my gilding, however much that is, whether it's one tiny little thing, a piece of a border or half the scroll. Um, the great thing about gilding is a little bit of gold will go an awfully long way. <clears throat> so a little bit will add a lot of bling, um, which is one of the reasons I recommend you go buy real gold because even at the rate that I gild, which is extensive, it takes me over a year to go through a full pack. Um, unless I'm doing Visconti. Visconti's its own animal. Okay, so I've got my two pieces now sized. Okay, now I'm just gonna set those aside and let those dry. If I were doing an actual scroll, I'd let it sit overnight. Um, I know my humidity in Florida. I know my humidity in um, my house. Um, Florida sometimes actually is over humid or over dry because our ACs are running so much. Um, but you really want to make sure that um, your size is dry or nothing else we do will work correctly. Your gold won't stick. Um, your gold will stick too much. Your size will move. Um, patience is kind of the biggest factor of this. Okay. So <clears throat> because I don't want to make you wait a couple of hours or overnight on video, um, I have pre-prepped two other pieces. So we here we have our dry ones. Okay, again, per slash vellum, Bristol. <coughs> so you can see these are dry to the touch. I can touch them. They are fine. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my leaf. And this is the part where I get cheater face. Okay, this is usually the part where everything thing, people complicate. Um, I am a firm proponent of the fact that anyone can gild and that this is not actually magic or witchcraft. Um, I have seen classes that take hours to do this process and I never quite understand it. I am gonna go in. This is my loose leaf. This is the sheet I just showed you. I got it to lay back down. I'm gonna go in with my finger. Yes, my finger. And I'm gonna pull some leaf off. Now that's a lot, so I'm going to pull a little less. About that much, okay? 
<clears throat> I'm going to go in here and I'm going to breathe on my card. I just huff on the page like I'm fogging a mirror. I do not use a pipette. I tend to find they dribble. And frankly, it's just an extra step. I'm going to go in. I'm going to tap my leaf onto my leaf. <laughs> that's funny. I made a joke. Okay, that's it. Congratulations, you have gilded. Now, you can't, it's hard to see this on here, but there's a little bit that didn't get picked up over here on this corner. So I'm going to go in, huff again, tap some more. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. This is the other reason I recommend real leaf. Um, 22 karat and 18 karat leaf will stick to itself and, and erase any patch edges if you missed a spot and need to go back in. Okay. Um, faux, the faux metal leaf will not do that and it will tear. Um, part of getting clean edges <clears throat> is uh, using the right stuff. Okay. So again, we're going to do it again on our vellum. Again, a little bit of gold on my finger. Um, what I would normally do if I have a, and I'll show you in this one because I'll have some left over. So I've got that on there and you can see I've kind of got these little flakies that stuck around. This is my, uh, where'd it go? This is my jar of loose leaf flakes and I will just scoop my extras into the jar. And either eventually I will have enough to, um, do some more gilding with this or make shell gold. I've been saying I'm going to make shell gold for 10 years and I still haven't done it. So you can see how that's going. <coughs> okay. So you'll notice on this one, there's, there's a little bit of overlap. Um, some of the gold sort of stuck to the page and this is part of gilding. Um, we don't want to waste entire leaves of gold, but you're going to, you're going to lose a little. It's a, it's a very thin substrate. Okay. So I put my glassine over and I just burnish with my flat rock. And this is just making sure all the edges are adhered down. Okay. And do the same thing on my Bristol piece. Although that one really kind of hit a nail on the head the first time. <clears throat> Gonna take my big brush and this little one and go back in and just kind of brush off that extra leaf. Okay. So now we have, oops, sorry, over here. We have two little gilded leaves. Ooh, they're shiny, look. Okay, so some things I want you to notice, there's no there's no raising on this, there's no height. This is flat gilding. This is this is perfectly appropriate for scroll work. <clears throat> Much of the gilding done in books was flat, although there was some just a raised gilding in some places. Um, it really depends on the manuscript and what they're using. Um, but this, this was, we're 13 minutes into this video and that included all my materials prep. So there's that. So what happens if um, you go over your line with your brush, which I did down in here, okay? So if you look down in this corner, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe if I can zoom in for you. Okay. <clears throat> um, I bobbled when I was putting my brush work in. So I'm just gonna go in with my X-Acto and clean up that space. I am not scratching hard, I am scratching very lightly and the gold will just come right off. So you can clean up any of your line work that you are not happy with from your painting. <clears throat> you can do the same on Bristol, but it's a little harder. Another reason why as you get more, um, more advanced and more into this, I really suggest using Perg if your kingdom allows it. Okay, and then again, you just clean that up. <clears throat> All that would be left to do would be to outline these, um, either with your crow quill or your micron or whatever you happen to be using. But uh, yeah, that's it. So 15 minutes, um, including explanation from start to finish uh, for flat gilding. This is not witchcraft, guys. Anybody can do this. Um, but you need to understand how your materials work and you need to not be afraid of them. Um, I really do recommend using, I, I know it seems wasteful, using your finger. You're going to get some gold on your finger. Horror, whoa. Um, you can still see a little bit of flex on there. Um, but it's not a lot of waste and you're going to get much better application and a lot more control. Um, using things like a gilder's tip or a brush to pull your gold off the sheet um, is great if you have the technique down. But it takes a while to master that technique 
And I find for most SCA scribes, when we just want to do a couple little spots of, of leaf, that this works just fine. So that is uh, Gilding Demystified. And I'm not even sure if I gave my name at the beginning. Uh, I'm Melisande de Bourges. Uh, I am a Laurel and Pelican in the Kingdom of Trimeris. And uh, my Laurel is in Scribal Arts, which is hopefully apparent at this point. <laughs> uh, have a great day. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to uh, reply to this video when I post it and I will happily answer. I'll also post where I buy all of my uh, resources. Bye guys.